Good afternoon to everybody. Thanks for clicking on to the Wednesday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. It is hump day and we are for quickly rattling through this work week. Before we continue with the video, hit that like button, share with your friends and family and subscribe. It is, as always, very much appreciated indeed. And we continue to see this rather distinct north-south contrast in temperatures this afternoon, knocking the door of 30 Celsius once again. We did officially hit the first 30 of 2024 at Chertsey in Surrey in the, the, during the course of yesterday afternoon. We are probably going to knock on the door, and we are knocking the door of 30 Celsius in a few spots between what, Worcester, Birmingham, down towards the greater London area this afternoon. Only 16s and 17s across parts of the north, as you can see here, uh, as we progress into southern Scotland, we start to creep into the 20s. And then as we move into the heart of England, we're moving from mid-20s to upper 20s across the board. So a nice warm summer afternoon to speak about as we move towards the final days of June. We've got the, another pleasant warm day in the Dublin area. Churchtown, Dublin, recording a current temperature of 25.9 Celsius. The fresher across the West Coast at Mace Head is only 13.2 Celsius this afternoon here. Looking at the Europe overall, uh, and you can see, let's have a look, quick look actually. Um, no, we'll look at Europe and then we'll look at the temperatures for yesterday afternoon. The maximums, these are the current temperatures across Europe, as you can see, quite warm across the majority of Europe. Looking at the, the maximum temperatures for yesterday afternoon, look like this here. This is for Europe and the quite warm air mass dominate the European pattern yesterday and for uh, the UK you can see here that we only had a 14.6 at Lockless Garnock while we had the 30.0 Celsius uh, in Surrey yesterday afternoon. So I want to look specifically at the month of July uh, but before we continue we are going to look at the GFS ensemble this is the 500 millibar geopotential height anomalies here for the upcoming five day period you can see a rather positive Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation signal. We've got the region over uh, the southern half of the United States. We continue to see a strong jet features running over the top of that ridge here. It's been a cool June across, say, uh, the heart of Canada. Um, but we have got a ridge over the over Alaska, northwestern Canada, that is sending a cool air mass into eastern Canada and even through the Great Lakes in the northeastern half of the United States. And as that trough is kind of digging a little bit more over the eastern side of the country, uh, we are seeing obviously heat across say, the central United States uh, and southeast. The contrast between that cool in the northeast, co cooler conditions, should I say, and the heat across the southeast means that we've got a jet uh, that is reasonably strong eggs in North America. That is going to start to help uh, this ridge building a little bit the further north we are flattening out the overall flow within the atlantic so we are losing that the negative trough the deepening of the trough uh, down over the north atlantic which has then been pumping high over the western side of europe we're flattening that out now and we've got more of a distinct um, ridge underneath trough uh, set up here as we move through the next five days or so as we skip on the day six through 10 you can still see that contrast the strong ridge uh, underneath a strong negative here to the north and we've got a distinct westerly flow overall into the west of europe here including the uk and ireland here as we move towards the uh, period between this is a way out to the 6th through the 11th of july now this is day 11 through 15 of gfs and so you can actually start to see a little bit of a change taking place we're starting to see more positive over greenland up into the Arctic region, we've got a negative here over the UK and Ireland here. What I would expect to see is a little bit more, um, a bit more troughiness into the northeastern side of the United States here. More region here, possibly hooking up between the Mid-Atlantic and Greenland here and a trough over the UK and Ireland. And the reason why I think that might be the case is if we look at the current sea surface temperature profile here, of NOAA. You can see here uh, a very, very strong warmth over the North Pacific here, cool waters against the California coast. We've got a very warm Atlantic here, especially across central 
and southern portions of the, the basin itself. We've got cooler waters here to the west of the UK and Ireland, then we've got a warmer than average North Sea. But what my thinking is with regards to where the pattern is going to set up for the month of July, I've came up with this very, very childish drawn here showing where I think we might start to see the ridge and jet stream position as we move through the month of July. And I'll give you the reasons in a second here. This warm water over the North Pacific, I think, may boost the high over the North Pacific here. We've got quite a strong jet that has been allowing the upwelling of cooler waters to the north of this warm um, area. That's been far up a stronger than average jet. We've also had a stronger jet running across the Canadian and US border with a heat dome over the central United States. Now, what I think may happen is that we have got a, a negative PDO signal, and, and that tends to be conducive for ridging over the heart of the United States and also drought, building drought during the heart of the summer season across the central United States. And I think with this configuration of sea surface temperature profile based on what we've seen atmospherically, this, uh, this gives me reason to think that the high may try to focus over that warm water within the central Atlantic basin. We have got cooler waters. Now notice here something. If we look at the CDAS data for the same model, you notice that we've got cooler waters to the west of the UK here. And uh, that is quite a big difference here. Notice that the cold waters here to the west of the British Isles. Now we've had, uh, you know, the cool first half of June northerly winds that has been forcing the waters to cool here to the west of the British Isles and Ireland. And then we've got this area of very, very warm waters. And what I think may happen is we'll have a region building over the North Pacific. We've got a slight troughiness over the western United States. Then we've got the big ridge congregating and positioning, anchoring over the heart of the, the plains here, the central United States. Then a trough over the eastern United States, not necessarily deepening of the troughs. We've got shortwave troughs at this time of the year because of, a, you know, we're, we're in summertime. Weaker jets, harder to differentiate as to where positioning of ridges and troughs is going to orient them themselves it becomes a lot more difficult this time of the year to figure out patterns compared to the winter time but my thinking is that we may start to focus the high over this warm water with a, a weakening trough northwestly component to the flow into the uk and ireland here and what kind of backs this idea up is if we look at the ecmwf weeklies this is the mean sea level pressure for the next 30 days. So this takes out between Tuesday the 25th of June and Thursday the 25th of July. And notice the positioning of the ridges. Now we've got a ridge over the North Pacific. I think we're going to have a ridge over the heart of the United States. This is mean sea level pressure, by the way. So this is can be different to what we would expect to see reflecting in the, the 500 millibar level. But we've got low heights over the United States and we've got the region over the North Atlantic here with a possible northwesterly component to the flow. Now let's have a look now at the upper air setup here for the same time frame, 25th of June through the 25th of July. And you notice here we've got region over the North Pacific, a little slack, a little weak trough showing up in the Northwest, region over the heart of the United States, weak trough bit of a northwesterly component here. We've got some fairly cold air across Canada versus very hot air, air over the, the United States. We're going to have some strong winds and features running, disturbances running around the top of this high. We're going to see that probably during the month of July. Then we've got the region back over the North Atlantic here, possibly a feedback to that warm waters over the North Atlantic. And then we've got, a, it's the core of the position of the high. It's hard to see. It looks as if it's quite a, a ridgy looking pattern with a trough over the top. But that this personally, this is something that I think is possible for the month of July based on, on, on a few different factors as I've already discussed. Let's have a look and see what some of the models are indicating. This is the NMME model here for precipitation for the month of July. You can see here heavy precipitation 
think we're going to have somewhat of a phase four, five, and six NGO during the month of July. Notice here we do have a lot of uh, uh, wetter than average through the MDR region uh, of the uh, the Atlantic here, Caribbean, into the Gulf of Mexico, Florida, the southeast. It's looking as if it's quite wet here, seen by the model. Then you've got this ribbon of moisture here extending off the southeast United States and to the west of the UK and Ireland. But generally, it's a it looks like a dry signal seen by this model here. Wet across, uh, like I say, Indonesia, Nino region, um, uh, MJO region, 4.5. And also we've got a wet India. We've also got a wet equatorial Africa, which means that it looks as if we're going to have a robust uh, wave train here coming off the African continent. This is the, the CANCEPS model Canadian. You can see here a wet MDR into the Caribbean, into the Gulf of Mexico, wet uh, through MJO uh, 4.5. And uh, five, four, and five, should I say, rather than 4.5. A wet India, once again, as well, indicate that we have an active monsoon uh, situation over this region. And then looking at the CFSV2, a little bit drier across southern India, wet across the north of India here, wet through uh, Indonesia. We've got a little bit less, we still have areas of wet than average, but a little bit less so. Uh, through the MDR into the Caribbean, into the Gulf of Mexico. We've got a dry UK and Ireland, slightly wetter across the central portions of the Atlantic Basin. Looking at temperature anomalies here, this is off the CFSV2, by the way, for the month of July. You can actually see that it's slightly warmer than average across the south, but the dry, uh, cooler than average across the north, warmer across the central North Atlantic, uh, which would indicate to me it's showing a positive in terms of the upper heights um, so that is quite quite notable to see let's have a look and see specifically at uh, europe and show uh, what it's uh, seeing here so this is the temperatures for the month of july cooler across the north warmer across the south if we look at the upper air setup here for the same period and you can see here that it has that kind of flat stretched out positive heights with a core possibly to the southwest of the UK and Ireland here. In terms of temperature, normally I think it would be hard to go with a colder than average July, but I think we're leaning drier than average at the moment here based on what I can see. I think we'll see the core of the trough, uh, the, uh, the ridge to the west of the UK and Ireland during the month of, of July here with a possible weak trough signal over the UK and Ireland. Um, so yeah, that is my thinking generally speaking at this moment in time. In terms of the MJO, by the way, it looks as if we've got widespread singing over the Americas and over the Atlantic and widespread upward motion in the ocean and uh, through the Western Pacific Ocean. This would certainly help with regards to that active uh, Indian monsoon during the month of July here. But that's quite an interesting kind of signal here in the, the CHI anomaly. So um, yeah, certainly plenty of reason to stick around here on the channel. We're going to look at this in a little bit more detail. We're going to look at the, the next several days into the weekend in tomorrow's video. So stay tuned for that as well. And do me a favor, if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, please do so. I would greatly appreciate your support. It certainly helps the channel very much indeed. So um, and yeah, and like the channel as well. Uh, so Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you hopefully tomorrow with more. Bye.